don't stare at me with those big gray eyes. You knew this time was coming. Yeah. Your usefulness is at an end. Well, not quite a complete end. Hi folks, welcome back. I'm sorry you had to see that, but you know, sometimes we just have to live with the grim reality of living in a digital wilderness. In happier news, the cows finally had their little calf. But if I crouch in front of him, oh, see how scared he is of me? Yeah. Yeah, he can't quite... There. He's not at all familiar because I ran out of grain. I had just enough grain, two pieces of rye left, to mate these two guys again. Wow, they're loud. I, <laughs> I may need to turn the uh, animal, turn the volume down on them. But yeah, so they finally had their calf, and hopefully they're pregnant. I can only ever tell. Wow, that is loud. I can only ever tell if I'm crouching in front of them with food. And since I have no food at them for them at the moment, I can't tell. Um, you can also see, I, I'm quickly discovering that, just as I did in the fall, that fall was a very busy time for farmers. You know, who would have thought, eh? Harvest time. Um, spring is also pretty busy. Uh, lots of stuff happening. You can see these are my uh, peach trees here. They're in blossom. The cherry trees are in blossom. I'll actually get cherries off these guys this year because they're big enough now. The peach trees probably not. I don't think they're going to give me anything at one. They might, but it's a good chance they won't. Um, I've replanted my crops. Uh, the only things to take note of there is I've left some space around the grain crops to allow for expansion. Since those are the th things I'm most in need of. Uh, not sure why I left a space here. Oh, to expand the potatoes. Because you can make vodka with the potatoes. I've got the... Ooh, these guys are looking ill. I hope they're not dead. Well, we'll have to see. It might be too still too cold for them. Um, but I put them in the ground as soon as I could because I still want to see if given an entire season whether I can actually uh, grow sugarcane to maturity in this biome. Or, sorry, in this, uh, in this temperate zone. And uh, I've left the jute also with a bit of space to either side simply because it sprawls so much. It makes it really hard to work with the other crops that are under its wing, so to speak. Anyway, that's that stuff in place. Um, the other thing is you can see I finally got the uh, blast furnace built up to three levels. And I ran out of coal along the way. Uh, not coal, I ran, ran out of uh, ore, iron ore along the way, so I had to go and mine a whole bunch more. And actually, not coal, but charcoal was another big problem for me. My little, uh, my little tree farm over here uh, couldn't keep up with the charcoal needs of all that production, so I'm going to have to expand that. I think what I'll do is knock down that hill and expand the uh, tree farm out that way. But I ended up, much like Europe in the Middle Ages, I was starting to denude the area around me of trees. So I guess it's not that noticeable yet, but this whole area here got all its trees removed just to keep up with charcoal production. Um, now, one of the things with the uh, blast furnace here, especially once it gets to be five tall, I'm still working on that, is you have to get up to the top of it in order to be able to dump all the ore in, which is the same as it is for the bloomery. Uh, the difference is with the bloomery, I can just slap a ladder on the side of it. The problem here, I can't do that because these steel plates are actually like not half blocks, but they're partial blocks that are actually sitting here. So I can't put anything in here. So that means I actually had to build a ladder somewhere around here. It's all getting quite tight. I may have to move these, uh, I may have to move these chests. I'm not sure yet, but for now I'll, I'll build the ladder up back here, I guess. So for that, I will need either wooden blocks or smooth stone blocks. What have I got here? I've got enough smooth andesite, so I'll use that. 
And I should have plenty of ladders in here. Yep. And that would also explain, now well, let's see, this is the block that they're in, this is the block that they're not in. Uh, something I said in the previous episode was that Um, it seemed to me that it was much finickier dropping all the ore and stuff into the blast furnace than it used to be. It would be keep popping back in my inventory. I now realize, now that I've built this up, that the reason for that is because in the past I was always standing up here, like one block above it, because of the ladder-like thing I had to build to get to it. And that's why it wasn't always popping in. So, uh, might as well demonstrate that by getting this going. This is actually my first run of the three high, so, you know, you can feel privileged to be seeing this. All right. So, since it's three high, I can take 12. 12 ore, and I'm going to need... Well, let's start with 16 and hope that's enough. Oh, and I need flux too. Hang on a second while I go grab. Do I not have any flux out here? I should move flux out here. Let me quickly go and do that. Okay, there we go. I now have uh, 12 ore, 12 flux, and, tw and 16 coal. So let's dump those in. If I can. There we go. Yeah, and see, so we've got the XS4 sitting on top. XS4 charcoal. So let's get this guy going. And this time I'm going to let it sit for a while, like I said. So what's the time right now? It's almost 1900, so we'll call it 1900. <clears throat> so I'm going to let it sit for a little while uh, after this gets up to temperature. And I'll refuel it as necessary. And I don't know how long to wait after it gets up to temperature. I guess maybe wait half an hour of in-game time. And then I'll hit the bellows and see if that's good enough. Because that'd be better than having to sit here and continuously be bashing on the bellows all the time. So I will bring it back when that's done. Or when we're at that point, rather. See you then. Okay, 11 units. It already went through all the extra. I threw another... Oh, it missed. Oh. This is still fiddly. All right, let's try dropping this in. Yeah, see, again, it missed. I think what I need to do is build up around here so it doesn't overshoot all the time. Let's try that, see if that works better. There, okay. Let's see if that'll keep it going for a while. Anyway, in terms of timing, that kind of throws all the timing off. So it was 1900, so it's been like three and a half hours now that it's been sitting up here. So let's try pumping away on this for a bit. Hit the bellows. Get that blast of air going. It's up to temperature now. And it doesn't immediately melt. 
So I'll keep hitting the bellows and adding fuel and till the melt starts. Got to keep that temperature up. Up oh, there, it's coming through now. And what's the time now? It's uh, 23, 24, 19. So it takes seems to take about four hours. There we go. I wonder if there's any fuel left that I can recover. Which I guess is the question now, is how am I going to recover it? Ooh, I bet you if I drop... Yeah, there we go. Hurt myself, but it was worth it to save nine charcoal. Okay, I need... Some molds. Uh, it's probably... Oops, I keep forgetting here. Yeah, I have to get it back up to temperature again. There we go. And so what am I getting out of this? I think I'm getting just three, right? I keep clicking on the wrong one when I want to look at the metal. Yeah, that's it. Just three ingots worth out of all of that. And there's still some fuel sitting there that I can't really get at. Yeah, it's part of the mix, I guess, at this point. If I look downside, I won't see it, right? Yeah, no, it's part of the mix, so I can't get it back out anyway. So it seems like this is always a lossy process in terms of the fuel. There's always a little bit left over. I guess I could now go up and dump more ore in. I won't do that here just because that's kind of finicky on camera. But if you want to make optimize the use of this, I guess after you've done one batch, you go up and dump more ore in and then top up the fuel. And that would probably be the best way of doing it. Cool. But anyway, so that gives me three of my three of these ingots, which last episode I showed how to form those into steel ingots. So I won't bother doing that again. But uh that will then bring me up to a total of four steel ingots and I need 10 more to get myself up to enough to make a steel anvil. <clears throat> so you can see it's really going to be worth my while to build this thing up to the full maximum height of five. I thought while I was waiting here for the uh, for these last few ingots to get up to welding temperature, I'd just demonstrate using the crucible on top of the forge to melt this anvil, my copper anvil down, since I don't really need it anymore. It's going to generate a lot. I should go unload some stuff from my uh, inventory, actually. Here, just quickly get rid of a bunch of crap to make room for what's about to come. Since there are a lot of ingots in that, uh, in that anvil. And this is the last of my charcoal, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, the blast furnace really does go through the charcoal quickly. Well, he's almost up to temperature. Well, or, or the, actually, the crucible is up temperature. The copper is still warming up, so it's not to melting point yet. Um, the other thing I should point out is, uh, my apologies if you can hear fan noises in the background. We've been going through something of a heat wave out here on the best coast. And uh, I would melt into a little puddle of Maya knife without that fan. So I don't think any of us want to see that. So, uh, this guy still hasn't melted yet, so I might as well do my last. Where did you get to? There you are. And that's my last double ingot. Where are you at? Yeah, he's about to melt down any time now. Going through a meltdown. Yeah. That's how I was earlier, running around trying to get all the... Uh, get all the... Uh, or through the blast furnace. Uh, let's go here. Actually, I'll keep him in there. 
I don't need to make any more double ingots. I have, I actually have all seven that I need here. In fact, let's here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll make that anvil in a moment. Let's just, there we go. So now you can see this guy is melted down. Oh, did I, I didn't wait long enough on that one. There we go. Oh, so one of these other ones, yeah, isn't completely full yet either. Because it should be a nice multiple of a hundred up here after it's loaded, finished loading up each ingot mold. Not that I have a lot of use for this much copper. Although actually, the next stage in our technological development, or at least in our development of alloys, is going to be black steel, which requires making black bronze, which uses copper. So, so I am actually going to need probably all of this. Has any of this cooled off enough to uh, be non-liquid? Okay, well I'm not going to sit through that with the cool down cycle here, so let's go and make ourselves our steel anvil. And turn on the lights. The other one's already on. Good. And the usual anvil shape. And the other reason to melt down the copper anvil was to make room for the new anvil. Take the flex out of there. Put it into there. And now if I want to, I can make it, make a tool, but it's, I can make a steel tool and I will do that, but it's no different from any of the tool making I've done in the past. So yeah, the other thing I wanted to say is I talked previously about how I had to set up a resource pack to make the drinking and eating sounds a little quieter so they didn't blow my eardrums out. Um, so I've now also gone and done that to the anvil sounds. And uh, so when I'm hammering away the anvil, it's a lot quieter now, which is nice. And what I'll do is I've, I'll, I've zipped up the resource pack and I put my Dropbox and uh, uh, you'll find in the description a link to it just in case anyone's interested. Like if you don't like having your ears assaulted by the anvil noises in particular, then you might find it useful. And that's it. See, we've got lots and lots and lots of copper now. Oh, I have no openings left. Oopsie. There we go. And the last thing I wanted to do here was during the processing of all, all that ore is I ran very low on tool molds because they do break over time. So I've got a new set that I want to do. And they'll have to come up to temperature and then I'll have to use the anvil to bring, or the anvil, yeah. I'll have to use the bellows to bring them up to brilliant white uh, in order to finish firing them. But I'll do that off camera since I've seen you, since you've seen me do all those things before. And we'll get on with something else. Well, in my all consuming need for more charcoal, I've had to deforest more of the land around me, but still doesn't look that bad. Uh, hopefully that should be the last I need to do that because this time I harvested enough Douglas fir saplings to uh, double the size of my little tree farm over here. I won't do that right now. I'll wait until the current crop comes in uh, because in the past, if I haven't laid them all, like planted them all at a very similar time, then I end up with a bunch of them not coming up at the same time. So uh, you can see if we have a look here at the date that we're almost at the end of spring. The uh, cherry trees no longer have their blossoms on them. So, and so they'll be coming in sometime in the next month. We should be getting cherries on them. The lemon tree, I think comes in toward the end of summer. It's got its blossoms out. And then we have the apple and the peach trees all have their blossoms, but I'm not sure about the peach, but the apples we know from, 
from previous episodes that they don't come in till uh, till fall. Oh, it <laughs> looks like my tree farm has come in. So I could go plant them all now, but uh, we've got more urgent things to do at the moment. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to point out here was that I didn't really like the sickly look of the uh, sugar cane here. Now, for other plants, they just show this kind of common little withered brown stub in the ground when, when they've died. So I was expecting that if the sugar cane was actually dead, it would show the same thing, but maybe it's a different, maybe it's different for sugar cane. Actually, maybe they all have their own different ones and they've just all looked the same to me because they were similar. Uh, but anyway, I went and replanted this row of sugar cane. I just ripped up, ripped up these dead looking ones and replanted their seeds. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I've also been eating a lot of uh, berries that have been coming in. So the next thing we need to do in advancing our uh, metal tech tree is we need to get to black steel. Now for black steel we need three things that we don't have yet. Let's go to my ores. Oh, I'm already on the ores map. Good. We need nickel, silver, and gold. Now if we look here... Oh yeah, I can zoom in a bit. Uh, we've got a Garnier de right deposit here and here. And Garnierite is the ore of nickel. So we've got that covered. Um, we've seen gold in a number of places, but it seems that in my uh, slacking off, I've only marked this one here. So uh, we'll keep an eye out for other ones, but you know, worst case, we can go get gold there. But we've never seen silver. And silver only occurs in gneiss and granite and that's why we've never run into gneiss or granite so i'm in the boat here i'm going to go north up here since north is close and i haven't been that way recently and just see what we can see go along until we find a uh, usual sort of thing see a change in the rock and then we can get out and uh, have a have a look what's this oh something right here all right let's oh it <laughs> uh, looks like gold actually uh, where's our propic? Oh, it's sulfur. Oh, that's right. I remember reading that in the um, in the uh, differences log for TNG. Is sulfur isn't found around uh, magma areas anymore. Now it's actually in TNG. It actually occurs as a as an ore. Okay, uh, let's quickly mark that so that I don't end up regretting it later on. And we show these ones in yellow, I think. Cool. I'm not exactly sure what we use sulfur for. I mean, I'm sure it's used in making gunpowder somehow, but I don't know if that's the only thing or if there's anything else that is. Okay, so what we want to do then is go along here and watch and see if the rock changes. Uh, that stuff up there is a copper deposit I found earlier. Just regular copper. But at least it's like sitting right out in the open. It's mineable and it's close by. So if I do find myself having to mine more copper at some point, that's where I will get it from. Yeah, so the... It seems like it's getting into a little bit of a pattern now is in spring you have to plant all your crops and uh, bring in the berries summer tends to be the traveling and exploring season this all still looks the same here and then in fall, of course, we have harvest. Oh, something just fell. Wonder what it was. Fall, we have the harvest, which is the busy time there, and and trying to get food ready for for winter. More about that in a minute. Oh, is it, no, it's just a flower. I thought it was a crop. It's just a flower. My paramore always hates it when I say just a flower. You know, flowers are important too, but not to me. At least not in the TFC. 
I guess if we ever get into dying, then they will become immensely important. Well, this is a different rock, but I think this just might be the same limestone extension we had elsewhere. Let's have a look at them. Uh, yeah, so fall is the big harvest. Oh, and we've got a hot spring here. That's going to matter in a moment, too. Let me... One thing at a time here. Let's just see what we've got. And this is, yeah, limestone gravel. So this is limestone here as well. Um, oh, just to finish off what I was saying, and it looks like winter time is when we do all the, uh, the smelting and forging work and all that sort of stuff. Mainly because we don't want to go exploring because that spreads the winter snow everywhere. Okay, I'm going to mark a few things here. <clears throat> there is actually, I don't even remember off the top of my head what it is, but there's, there is something that we want to make that will require hot spring water. So it's nice to know that this is handy. We've run into other hot springs before, but of course I didn't mark them. So since this is here, I'll mark it. And I'll also mark that we're into... Uh, that we're into limestone rock here. This is actually closer than the, or is it? No, actually this is about the same distance away as the other area we're looking at for limestone. In fact, if we look at the map, yeah, yeah, it is. This is where we had our limestone before. So this is probably just a big limestone area. That's sort of bad. Well, it means I should continue going due north and not go too too far west because west will just get me more into this limestone biome. Okay, let me mark these and I'll be back in a second. Uh, as we go along, we also want to keep our eye out for a couple other things. I really want to find an olive tree so we can start making lamps that take fuel oil since uh, since those last longer stay lit longer than torches do. I guess it's off over the open sea we go? Maybe not. Uh, speaking of putting up food for the winter, so all that preparation I did with the uh, pickling of food and everything, it turned out I really didn't use any of it. The only bit I used is I had some grand feline meat that I'd pickled. Oh, still limestone. And I had run out of I had run out of protein. I, I had a few soybeans from the summer harvest and I went through those pretty quickly. And obviously my fresh meat I went through pretty quickly as well. So no, it's all just more of the same limestone. Uh, so I ended up grabbing the uh, grabbing the pickled grand feline meat and eating that but the vegetables and that I didn't get through it's because the the stuff I had sitting in my chests in vessels it was actually lasting long enough for me I had enough of it I mean there's not very much there now to be sure so it, I may actually it may actually be here in the spring that I'll actually start dipping into my uh dipping into those pickled supplies because waiting while well, I wait for the new crops to come in. So still have to see, but it seems like if you, if I have enough of, if I just have en enough, you know, veggies and other things put away that I'm going to, although meat is, will be the big one. So next, next fall, I will concentrate more on, uh, on preserving meat. Oh, why am I grabbing? I don't need this much. More andesite. Okay. Well, I'll mark this and get back to you. So what does that do us on the map here? So we've gone from andesite to limestone to andesite. Oh, well. Okay, let's try heading... Well, we're facing east, so let's head east. How's that for a nice logical, rational approach. <clears throat> yeah, the other things that turned out to be a bit of a surprise, I mean, just I hadn't, I haven't played through in regular TFC enough, I guess, to get to that point. But by having the cows there and milking them, uh, that actually provided me with a ton of cheese. I mean, I could drink the milk itself, but cheese is the better deal. 
Um, so I was able to make a ton of cheese, which also gave me my, uh, you know, if I, my dairy slot. If I look here, you know, dairy, that's from eating cheese. Uh, so the big thing is, is grain and uh, grain and meat or grain and protein, I should say. Um, this is probably just andesite again, but yeah, andesite. And the reason I differentiate between protein and meat is because soybeans, as I kind of mentioned before, you can get protein from soybeans as well. <clears throat> so I'm hoping to expand my collection of soybeans. So that's another thing I want to keep an eye out here. Really not while we're in the boat, but once we're on land again, is I want to keep an eye out for soybeans so that I can use them to expand my crop <clears throat> and I want to keep an eye out for um, for any grains that are spreading because our own grains are going to take quite a while to come in oh, this is still andesite I can tell okay all right well I'm gonna just wander around here a bit until I find something a little more interesting so I'll bring you back in when we've got something else to look at well, I finally see something different, something that isn't andesite. Uh, might be nice. Probably rhyolite, though. Phyllite. Sorry, that's actually what I meant, was phyllite. Because phyllite's got that pink color to it. Well, at least it's not andesite. Let me, let me show you where I've been on the map here. Let's first let's get into oh, we're already in rock mode good <coughs> so I ended up <laughs> east was the wrong way to go from last time that I had you guys in here is because it ended up this is all just a self-contained sea all surrounded by andesite except a little bit of limestone here in the name of the queen I dub thee the andesite sea off here there's this like wriggly little channel that we finally get into and that's where we are now and so at least we found some phyllite so i'm going to continue in this direction and uh, see what else i find in terms of crops uh, i spotted some kind of grain that wasn't ripe enough yet to know exactly what kind it was and that's it i mean i'm mostly looking at the rocks anyway so Doubtless, I'm, my eye is just not picking things up, but I haven't seen any fruit trees from the water either, and they're usually relatively easy to spot. So where should I go from here? Well, it looks like it closes off up to the north, so I'll continue heading northwest. All right, I will bring you guys back in if, if I find something new. Well, this is different. Not Definitely not phyllite, maybe conglomerate. Doesn't seem brown enough for uh, mudstone. Let's see what we got here. Schist. Huh. I think there was a time we were actually looking for schist, but that time is not now. Okay, uh, looks like same stuff there. Well, I'll mark it and move on. Um, before I do that, though, I'll just show you where I am. Uh, looks like I may be getting to the end of this. This is just that narrow channel I had up here. So there's, actually this is where I first hit the phyllite in there, and so it looks like we get into schist. Yeah, you can see a color change here, so this is all going to be schist probably here. I'll head south to see if there's a way out of it, but probably not. Still, I'll get this mapped out and then figure out where to go from there. Bring it back. So apparently, I'm in an area where there's some lava about. Let's have a look. Yeah. As you can see, i am just been going up this little river here. It's still all schist, though. But I, what they look like to be pockets of lava around here. <laughs> More than pockets? Can I... I don't think I even want to try to squeeze by. Huh. Oh. 
nice and bright can see the see that it's all schist though so don't need to go any further that way all right back out we go i don't know that there's i can still explore up here and down here but i may have to uh come up with a a different plan here i may have to go back to my old idea of actually stopping and sinking oh geez this wasn't here before <laughs> I guess that's one thing that happens when it spawns in, right? Is that the lava has to take time to, from the initial spawn to get down. So I, I could have been sealed off in here. I would have had to hoof it out on foot. Oh, geez, more flame there. All right, I dub thee the river of flame. It's a shame you can't actually put labels on the maps here. You just get the single letters. That'd be kind of cool. Alright, well I'm going to head back out here and finish exploring this bay-like thing that I'm in here. See if there's any other exits out of it. And if not, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll figure that out when it happens. See you then. Uh, this looks like more of the schist. Well, maybe not. I don't see any greenishness to it. It's, could be something else. What is it? Nice! Ah, okay, all right. This is one of the ones we want. I was not expecting to find that here. Where are we here? Let's, let's go back to my map mode. Yeah, given that we found... We have... Ah, stop moving around me. We have andesite here. Fillite here and schist here. I was really not expecting this to be yet another rock. Different rock type. Oh, that is, uh, that's great. Well, it's just what, just what the doctor ordered. Or I guess in our case, just what the metallurgist ordered. Okay. Uh, five. Grab that. Okay, let's see. How lucky can I get? Let's bring out our pro pick and just start whacking around. How long will it take me to find something of interest? Yeah, you keep saying not of interest, but eventually there will be something of interest. Just hope I don't get killed by anything along the way. Well, what are these? Some kind of moss, I assume. Can I... Uh, I can't take it with the sword. Can I take it with a knife? Ah, looks like I can take it with a knife. Spanish moss. Okay. Uh, makes sense, I guess. It's dangling down like that. Just get up here and see if there are any predators that want to gobble me up. Alright. <laughs> that would be something hey, to have my, uh, to find my silver ore and it's underneath a lava pit. I've never had that happen. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. This is not tetrahedrite. Native silver nugget. Yes. Uh, let's just put a torch in the ground here. Okay, and I have my knife with me, don't I? Yes, I do. So I can start generating myself some straw or hay or whatever call what was it called it's called a straw right straw yeah. okay so given that i'm a fairly far away from home here i'm going to set up a mine here and mine the uh mine out a bunch of silver i think i have enough food to last me and uh probably going to be the end of the episode there because i'm pretty sure we have more than enough content for fill up half an hour here so i will probably bring you back in well next episode i'll probably bring you back in inside the mine see you then